Shalom everyone. The Gemara in Adarim Pei Aleph 81 is stating a very interesting statement, saying that Hizaharu bivnei aniyim shemehem tetzet Torah. You should be careful or aware of the poor people because Torah is going to come out of them. And in order to understand what this um, phrase uh, or declaration comes to tell us, let's look deeper in, into it. So the Gemara says, and it's quoting a pasuk, this is a pasuk from, uh, from Bamidbar, we'll see it in a minute. So the sages sends uh, the following message to there. It's part of messages that the, the, the Chachamim of Eretz Israel are sending to the Chachamim of Bavel. And we'll see at the end why it might be relevant. And they say, be careful of the sons of the paupers as, as it is from them that the Torah will issue forth. As it stated, water shall flow from the branches. The branches, midaliav. Uh, okay, so... There's something that is coming out from the from the branches and it's full of water and it's watering around and it's it's coming from pl- sometimes maybe it's a little bit dry and it's a surprise that there's water coming out of it. And the same way we should pay attention to the uh, to the sons of the papar because Torah can also come out from them. It's a kind of a warning uh, or a attention call to, to tell us. You think Torah can also be learned and come from people from established homes, that, that their parents are Talmidei Chachamim, that it runs in the family? No, sometimes it's from the lowest places or the most surprising places, places you wouldn't think, we wouldn't think Torah can, can come out from, can, uh, can issue forth, can, can live, can prosper from. These are the children, the sons of the poor people, the Torah can also come out of them. Now, the pasuk that the Gemara is quoted, uh, quoting here is also very interesting because this pasuk in the in the book of Bamidbar 24 is part of the blessings that Bil'am Harasha is blessing the people of Israel. He wants to curse them, but God's turn it to be that he is blessing them. And part of the blessing are or, or more, more like what he sees in front of him. You know, the, the modesty of the people of Israel, the flourishing of the people of Israel, the closeness in hearts of the people of Israel. Um, it, it's, it's the pasuk here, Yizal Maim Midalayav, and water shall flow from, uh, from his branches. And the water shall flow from his branches comes to also tells us that there's a continuance learning and passing on the tradition and the Torah from generation to generation. If we thought that the passing of the tradition, the living words of the Torah, the mind, the Torah, can only be passed from a chacham to a chacham, from a scholar to a scholar, from a, maybe from a priest to a priest, from the, the son of the elites to the people of the elites, comes this statement and tells us, no, Torah can also be passed on through those areas in Am Yisrael, through these people of Am Yisrael, that you least expect the poor people that maybe don't have no time to learn Torah. Maybe they have no, no money uh, to learn Torah, and, and, and that's that's the warning. But in order to open it a little bit and, and, deep, and look deep inside this understanding, I want us to see few explanations that were said by, by Chachamim throughout the generations. And I'm starting with the Meiri. Meiri was a, a Chacham um, um, in, uh, in uh, uh, southern France, in, in Provence, at the 13th century. He was very original in his thinking. And the Meiri is telling us the following. A Torah scholar should always be quick to teach in a group or a yeshiva in order to share his benefits with others. So first he says there's something about the one who teaches Torah. You should know that if you learned a lot of Torah, you know, don't hold it as, as, as only your, your own. You have to share your knowledge with other people in a group or in a yeshiva. Pass it on. Pass the Torah that you learned on to other people. And a student, and now there is a, a, a statement for the student. A student should make as much effort as possible in Torah study. And he should not be discouraged because his family is poor and unwilling to spend enough of 
Torah study, uh, on money, on his Torah study. So says the Me'iri, a student who wants to learn Torah should learn Torah. Other external things shouldn't stop him. For example, the fact that his family have no money to teach him Torah. He should continue to, to, to learn Torah and trust that, you know, um, God will help and he'll be able to learn Torah because the learning of Torah should not have to do with how much money your, your family have. And in the other hand, and, and he continues to say, the Me'iri, or because his family are ignorant. A person who grows up in a family that is not a, a Torah learner, a learning family, can say, well, I'm coming from a very simple family. We, don't, we never learn Torah. I will never be able to learn Torah. And the Me'iri is saying, uh, for the Torah is ready for everyone. Everyone should come and learn from the Torah. The Torah is waiting for everyone, regardless to their past, to their dynasty, to their wealth, to their ability to understand. The Torah is there ready for everyone. As this, the rabbis instructed, and this is exactly why in our Gemara, it says, be careful with the children of the poor, for the Torah will come forth from them. As it is written, water will flow from his bucket. Read this not as from his bucket, but rather from his deprived. The word deprived in Hebrew, dal, poor, it sounds like the buckets. And the Torah can also come from the poor people. So don't, so be aware of them. You know, don't neglect them when you, the, the, the Torah scholar, comes to teach, uh, to teach Torah. Inclu also include uh, the poor people. Uh, and, 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 it's, and it continues to say that in another place it says, be careful with the children of ignorant, for the Torah will come forth from them. So we have two, two different groups. One, the poor people, one, the ignorant people. Their children can also become Talmidei Chachamim. So you, the teacher, the, 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 um, the community, the, the, the group of people who learn Torah, don't neglect them. Don't think they're not able to learn Torah from, from different reasons. Include them in learning the Torah. So that was the Me'iri at the 13th century. The Maharal, the Maharal of Prague in the 16th century is looking around him in, his re in, in the real Prague that he's at. And he's saying a very interesting uh, um, observation. And he says the following, and the children of the poor are better for Torah study. Okay, He's saying, it's not just be careful that the Torah will come from the poor people. The children of the poor are better for Torah study. Why? As it says in, in, in Nedarim, be careful with the children of the poor for the Torah will come forth from them. As it is written, water will flow from the bucket from the deprived, the Torah will come forth. And why is it that the Torah, the Torah study is better come from the poor, poor people? And the explanation for be careful with the children of the poor is for the Torah will come forth from them because a poor person is more prepared for his offsprings to be a Torah scholar. And then he adds something very interesting. As we can see with our own eyes, says the Maharal, I'm looking around me. You know who are the Talmidei Chachamim? It's the people, it's the children of the poor families that were able to learn Torah and study Torah with not, without thinking, you know, What's going to be, or what parnasa am I going to bring? Because their parents are willing to invest in their studies. Why? Only a poor man who has nothing in his world and has no part of the physical world is ready to put forth the seed which will be a Torah scholar in his children. The rich pe person says the Maharal, uh, the 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 poor, the rich people, the rich person wants his children to stay in the business. So he's not going to invest in them learning Torah, send them to, to the yeshiva or to, the, or to Midrashah because he wants them to, to be part of the business of this olam, ba'olam hazeh. Therefore, says the Maharal, the poor people are, have a clearer mind. It's, it's, they don't have a lot of assets. And also their parents say, well, I can't give them money. I can't give them Yerusha. There is nothing else to give them. At least I'll give them the opportunity to learn Torah, therefore, says the Maharal, I look around me, around me and I see that the, the, that the poor people, as he studied in the beginning, the children of the poor are better for studying Torah because of circumstances. That's what the Maharal is saying. 
I'm moving on to, to Harav Yosef Chaim, who knows known more as the Ben Ishchai. He lived in Baghdad at the 19th century. And he's also saying something uh, uh, realistic about what he sees around him. And the Ben Ishchai is saying, be careful with the children of the poor, for the Torah will come forth from them. The children of the wealthy, once they have learned Torah, it is unlikely that Torah will emerge from them to others by them teaching Torah to others. Says the Ben Ishchai, when a rich person learns Torah, it's unlikely that he will continue in a life of Torah. He learned Torah for a few years and then he goes out to his business to help with the family. So the Torah that they learn is not being passed on to the generations to come. As, as we said in the beginning that Izal Ma'im Idal Yav, this is the continuance flow of the, of the learning of the Torah, of the tradition passing on from generation to generation. But if you teach the children of the poor, then it will emerge from them to others. Since they are poor, they will teach others in order to provide for themselves. And if you teach poor children the Torah, it's more likely that they'll keep the Torah and be able to teach the Torah because they can gain some money uh, uh, from the teaching of the Torah. And then we have the remain, like we, we gather the Torah that's being passed from generation to generation within these ch uh, poor children and they, then they will pass it on. But all these things are, are really more uh, connected to circumstances. Is there a deeper, more principle-wise idea of the poor people learning Torah? Because it can be, there can be a time, for example, our, our times, that you don't have to be a rich person in order to learn Torah. And also rich people teach Torah and also poor people teach and learn Torah. Is there something else that we can make out of this sentence? And the Orl Shemaim was a Hasidic Rebbe in the 19th century. And the, and the Orl Shemaim is saying, I understand something else in this sentence. I understand something spiritual. And he says, and this is the meaning of be careful with the children of the poor for the Torah will come forth from them. You cannot say they are poor in wisdom because the Torah comes from them, rather poor who are obedient and modest. So says the Or Shamai when it says that it doesn't mean either they poor with money, like they have no money, they have no uh, they're not able to pay for their studies. And it also doesn't mean that they pour in their understanding, that they uh, um, that they that they pour in wisdom because if they if Torah gonna come out from them, obviously they have a mind, they have ability to think. Therefore, he says, it's not about that. It's about how, per, how, how a human being, a person, people prepare themselves to listen to the Torah, to learn the Torah. And that is by being anavim, by being modest and by being obedient. Knuim anavim. And he understands the word aniyim as anavim, as, as, as modest, as humble. And he says, only a person who is humble uh, and, and is willing to put himself in a place of listening to the words of the Torah is the person who's going to deliver the Torah for, uh, forth uh, from generation to generation. And I want to end with another direction that we hear from uh, Rashi, who is not Rashi in, in Masechet Nedarim, but is, is, give, is taking us into a different route of understanding that pasuk. And Rashi is saying, is, be careful with the children of the poor. Do not dis disregard the importance of teaching them Torah. The Hizaharu doesn't come to tell me, oh, you should pay attention. Also, poor people can, can be smart in Torah. Be a Tamidei It's The Hizaharu is for the teachers. And the Torah is, and, and the Gemara is saying, you should be careful. Don't say, because they're poor, I don't want to teach them Torah or nothing is going to come out of them, or it's a waste of time to teach them Torah. Be careful. Do not disregard the importance of teaching them. It is as important as teaching anyone else, because Torah belongs to everyone. And the Chafetz Chaim, in, in his book, Avat Chesed, is, is continuing the idea, and he's saying, be careful with the children of the poor, for the Torah will come forth from them, and the merit of one who does this very great in other words, 
חפץ חיים, he's talking, maybe talking to the people in his time, thinking that it's a waste of time to teach the children of the poor people or the children of the, of the ignorant families. And he says, no, 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 no. You should understand the merit of one who does, who teaches the poor people is great. As, he, as we said, anyone who teaches Torah to the child of an ignorant person, even if God has made a decree, he nullifies it for him. It's so great to teach Torah to people, to children that we would think Torah doesn't belong to them because of their uh, social status, because of their economic status, because they're ignorant, they're coming from a family as a simple family. From all these things together comes out a picture that says Torah belongs to everyone. No statuses, no, no uh, social statuses, no, no important dynasties, important families, wealth. Everyone can and should learn Torah as well as they can. And more so to the teachers, do not be selective. Do not say they will understand, they will not understand, therefore I will, I will only teach them because you never know who is going to catch something, who is going to grasp a very deep idea and move on the flow of the, learn, of the, of the Torah learning. And I think maybe, maybe if we go back to the beginning where we said that this message was sent from the, from the, from the land of Israel to Babylonia, maybe it also comes to hint that the delicate situation that we're starting to, that's starting to, um, um, to happen at the third, fourth, fifth century, where Bavel start to be stronger and the, the, the Torah center in Israel is trying to be weaker. And maybe the people of Israel, the Chachamim of Israel, are standing to their peers in Bavel saying, you know, don't, don't look at us like, like we're the poor people. Don't look at us like we are the miskinim, that, that, that we are the, we, we're miserable, we suffer. Because yes, the land of Israel, the people of the land of Israel suffered more than the Jews in Bavel at those, at those centuries. That's why the Babylonian Talmud were, uh, uh, was codified um, only uh, at the 5th century, while the Yerushalmi Talmud was edited, was, was ended at the 4th century, because the situation in Eretz Israel was horrible. So they sent to Bavel and they say, you know, we're like Bnei Aniim. Be careful. Like, we... The Torah will come from us. And they're also playing, I think, with Mehem Tetzet Torah, that, of course, the Pasuk that says, Mitzion Tetzet Torah. Okay? So don't look down on us. You in Bavel, don't look down on us, the Torah scholars in, in Eretz Israel. And I want to end with a story about Rav Ovadia Yosef Zatzal. And Rav Ovadia Yosef did not grow in a rich family. He, was, he grew up in a very simple family. They lived in... Uh, the neighborhood of Beit Yisrael in Jerusalem. His father owned a little grocery shop, and and his child Ovadia helped him in the uh, in his shop. And one day the child wanted to learn Torah, so he started learning in Porat Yosef. That was a major, big yeshiva, a Sephardi yeshiva in Yerushalayim. But after a few months, his father called him back to the shop, saying, "You know, I need your help in the at the grocery store. I can't, I, I can't do it by myself." The head of the yeshiva, Rosh Yeshiva, Chacham Ezra Atia Zatzal, noticed that the new Talmud is missing. He went to look for him and he went into the grocery store. And he spoke to the father and said, let him back in the yeshiva. He's very good at the learning. Let him learn some Torah. And the father said, I can't, I cannot afford my son to learn Torah. I need his help. So Chacham Atia is telling him, like, give me the list of duties uh, of, uh, that, that you wanted him to do in the store, and I will do them. I'll take care of them, but let him go and learn Torah. So the father of Ovadia got really uh, stunned by this, this offer of the, of the great Chacham, and he was willing for his son to go back to learn Torah. And uh, Rav Ovadia emerged of, of, of that. He's a Rubev Neanim, Shemehem Tetzet Torah. Torah can come out from anywhere, with from anyone who is willing to put enough effort of learning and passing on the Torah to others. Thank you.